we saw a bear. I never thought Guardfight Vanguard would feature a bear, but we got a bear. That's uh, that's an accomplishment. I feel. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this week uh, we had a bear, and we also had Shin, and he wanted to be an adult. And my one message to you is Shin, Shin, my man, my buddy, my bro, don't be an adult. It sounds cool at first. You don't have to go to school. You make your own money. All that sounds cool. But remember, you got bills. Bills! <laughs> we, will, uh, we will keep my crippling depression out of this. Uh, so yeah, what I really liked about the whole Shin plotline was that his sort of thing he's now going to try and do because he lost to Eska isn't based around the generic, oh, I gotta get stronger, so I'm just gonna do card game stuff. No, Shin actually feels like he's gotta man up and become an adult, and he feels like he's gotta become an adult in a way that makes sense and was still visually pretty entertaining. You see him, he's got on the suit, he's handing out a business card, like, yeah, that's actually kind of a logical thing. I could see someone in his position thinking he's gotta do, he's gotta grow up, he's gotta do what he thinks is the right thing to do, which as we know is a theme in this show. Um, but sort of the point is that, and I thought this was very clever, is that he's got to find out how to do it his own way. And I like the fact that it was shown to us in a way that wasn't just a generic exposition dump. It was shown to us through a card game metaphor. Yeah, they actually integrated card games into the episode's message. Don't always see that all the time, but it worked, and I liked it. I like that the whole idea from when he's fighting Rive is that Rive is trying to drill into him that Shin's got to become his own kind of adult. He can't keep relying on him, or he can't keep trying to just prove he's better than Eska. He can't do what he's seen on TV or anything like that. He's got to be his own form of an adult, and sort of the point is that's not always easy. Like, and that's sort of what I thought the episode did a good job of signifying was that trying to become your own person is hard, just as trying to make your deck your own is hard. Yeah, this is where we get fall into card game nerddom. So for those of us who build decks and all that, which I assume is most people watching this, one sort of problem you encounter is that decks can be countered, strategies can be dealt with. Uh, just like in life, you have hurdles and challenges to overcome. And there are a few different options you can do, which the episode wasn't afraid to address. I felt like it, the whole thing was just going to be, you got to figure out how to power up your Genesis. But no, they actually do what logically one must consider doing. One option is change your deck or in real life, change what you're trying to do. And that has the advantages of doing a new strategy and being able to learn different skill sets. But at the same time, there's also well, what about what you want to do? What about what have you been doing? What about what has been working in the past? Just as with the deck, what has been a good strategy or what has been working for you in life? These are two things you have to consider. And what's good about it is that both of these things have their place. Both of these messages can be delivered very poignantly and have a lot of truth to them. But what makes this unique is that the message is that you need to be somewhere in the middle. I like that idea that ultimately what Shin realizes is that he doesn't necessarily need to change what he's trying to do. He doesn't necessarily need to change Valkyrian, but he's got to adapt and adjust to making, well, just being able to have a new strategy and being able to get through life. And that's ultimately what he learns is that, yeah, he's a kid. Yeah, he's in over his head. Yeah, he's all this and all that. But he can learn and he can get better just as his deck can learn and can get better with him. And I think that's a very sweet, I think it's a very poignant message. And I like his fights against Rive too. I like that he just kept losing and losing. This was a good way to carry on considering the metaphors we talked about with the Eska fight. And this felt like a very good natural conclusion. And also from there, I think that's a good time to segue Oh yeah, uh, probably another thing to address, because obviously instead of finishing the fight, Rive leaves. So I just want to talk quickly about this whole Rive thing. So uh, Rive, whenever he has to go, he just looks at his arm and go, oh, well, time to start work. 
Now look, I think we all here can figure out that Rive is up to something or there's something going on in the background that he's involved with. They've hinted to this a couple times in the past and obviously we'll continue to hint further as we go throughout the season. Rather this gets addressed now or is actually just chrono build up, eh, we'll wait and see. Having said that, I feel like they could maybe be a little bit better with hiding it. Now look, obviously they know we're going to figure it out that Rive is up to something, but I feel like in the in-universe of what's going on, if you just constantly saw someone looking at their arm pretending to have a watch and clearly lying to your face, you'd get pretty pissed off rather he's your teacher or not. <laughs> So I sort of feel like, for the sake of the in-universe logic, they should just animate the watch. Like, yeah, we'll figure it out, Like, but at the same time, like, it just makes more sense. And like, when it gets to that point where you've got to reveal Rise Truth, and yes, balancing art, balancing art, well, what the audience knows this versus what they're expecting and versus what we can hide from them can be tough, but I feel like there's still a better way to handle it, which obviously we'll see how they handle it when we get to that point. I also like the fact that Angel Feather Kid wasn't like, there are legends spoken of in card shops throughout Japan of the power of Rive Shindo. He's like, oh, I read him in a magazine. Like, that's a very realistic, real-world way to say that you know about Rive's skills as a Vanguard player. Okay, so now that we've addressed that, uh, let us move on to, of course, Misaki my precious little brain weird orphan chick. So yeah, uh, in this episode we had two Masaki scenes. The one at the beginning I liked because it gave Masaki scenes with someone who isn't Shin or Eska. It gave her scenes with Mikuru and Rive and the idea that Mi Mikuru, uh, that Misaki has more people in her life besides these two and it's a good way to show other relationships in her life and I think that can be very important. So I quite like that bit uh, but the real Masaki scene is with the Valkyrian bit and I like the lead up to the Valkyrian bit. Uh, the guy is just like so why are you so determined to use Valkyrian? She's just like I just like him. He's cool. I like that thing because I always get sick of these overly complicated reasons for why these main characters have their ace card and I love that they address that he's like didn't your father give it to you or it fell from the heavens or it started talking to you that last one is a stab at their own franchise um but no Shin's just like it's cool I like it and I'm sitting here like yeah why can't it just be that that's nice I like that idea but then they get you, and they get you really good. You just do the flashback of little, cute little Masaki and how Valkyrian was so cool to her, and that's why Shin uses it. And I like that idea that it's not that Valkyrian has some super complex meaning to it. It's that it simply just reminds him of a happier time. It reminds him of when Masaki was that cute little innocent child he feels like he's lost and just wants to hold on to a resemblance of. And that's ultimately what makes him realize he's got to be his own adult, his own way, if he wants to do right by Misaki in the card shop and make everything work. And even Rive's kind of like, I didn't expect him to come to the conclusion like this. So that was nice. So now that we've addressed everything else, let us talk about the bear in the room. <laughs> So, uh, we knew that we were getting introduced to some more returning characters. At least I think the guy who's going to be using Last Card Revan is returning. I don't know, I'm not up to that point in G yet, because uh, uh, getting through that show is a very long, strenuous process. Uh, but yeah, so first up, we get Narukami guy first. I like that they just open with the weirdest one, because I know that guy is pretty funny in G. He's card fighting a bear in the mountains. And then, like, Eska and the butler. Eska's now Valkyrian. The butler's in the weird afro. It's stupid, and it's weird, and it's bizarre, and it's out of nowhere. But I kind of loved it. Because it was just so over the top in the way it was presented and how serious it was treating itself. Like, it just worked. That scene was everything Future Card Buddy Fight was trying and failed to be. So I really like that bit. Um, I could have done without him being like, I want to ride it. <laughs> like, that is clearly meant to be a sex joke. And uh, I feel like this show has a few too many sex jokes, believe it or not. Um, 
So then we get the next guy. That scene was right. It kind of led into the Rive being famous thing. He didn't really do much. And then finally, we get the return of our Lord and Savior, Dio. I know his name's Kinzaki, but he's Dio. That's all that matters. He rode up the side of a horse. He rode up the side of a building on a horse, damn it. Uh, <laughs> and that one was funny and weird. Because in G, they're very clearly don't know how to represent Kanzaki. So it's this weird combination of he's crying all the time, which is maybe funny, but is framed in a way that we're supposed to take seriously. So, okay, he's just some lunatic, but then he's got his weird, overly complicated experimenting on children bull crap, and he's just loud and stupid. And this at least was just like, yeah, he's a wacko. <laughs> That is genius. I loved it. Uh, this was a very good, fun episode. This video is going too long. Let's wrap it up with the Vanguard question of the week. So this has been a thing going on at my local since we've been uh, testing out the, the new uh, Destructive War upgrade stuff for the, the new set. Um, so a lot of people are kind of split because for the VRs, we got all new units as opposed to returning units which pissed a lot of people off because, well, there's a lot of stuff people would like new versions of. Mainly, Dudley Emperor was like the big one. People were like, give us a new Dudley Emperor, fuckers. But they didn't do that. And yeah, uh, I don't necessarily mind it because it shows that they're still trying to be creative in design. The Tachi one, I think, is just kind of boring and his artwork doesn't feel very Vanguard to me. Uh, but tell me what you think about that below. No right or wrong answers. And uh, as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and join us next week for a tournament. I totally believe that little kid is not going to join and be their third team member.